Now, without wasting any of your brushes' time, Toy Story 1 was great. I think it's really great for being the absolute first 3D film out in cinemas. So the film is about a toy named Woody, who's Andy's favorite toy since birth, and he gets a brand new toy named Buzz Lightyear, who thinks he's an actual fucking space ranger. Needless to say, in order to take care of this, Woody tries to make Buzz kill himself by launching him out of a window using a lamp. And after some troubleshooting and almost I'm getting obliterated in the sky by a fucking rocket because the neighbor kid is a goddamn psychopath, they go on ahead and go back in the car right before moving day. Some shit like that along the lines. Anyways, in my opinion, I feel like this is a very fantastic movie, S tier. Now, Bugs Life I knew existed at some corner of the internet, but I never actually took the time to sit down and watch it, because unlike Toy Story 1, I didn't desire to know what the hell it was. And yes, I definitely saw Toy Story 3 before Toy Story 1, don't blame me, I was born in 2007! Now, the film goes on ahead and splits between ants and grasshoppers, because grasshoppers are kind of, you know, the enemies of ants. The main reason why the grasshopper is evil is because he's demanding food from the ant colony, so that's just nice. Also, there's a few haunting scenes. Man, that's surely spooked some children. Anyways, I thought it was an interesting film. I watched it to the end, so B tier. Time for Woody's Roundup. He's the very best. Now, Toy Story 2 is a fantastic sequel to Toy Story 1. You see, the story this time is about a toy collector named Al who has an uncanny resemblance to Rattle from YouTube who wants to go on ahead and kidnap Woody because apparently he's this rare collectible toy in his quadrio collection of rare toys. And all of them want to go shipped off to Japan, except for Woody, who wants to return back to Andy because, well, love and respect, I guess. The secret villain ended up being this farmer guy who wanted to very badly go to Japan for some fucking reason, I don't know why. However, Woody meets his new girlfriend and pet horse, Bullseye. <coughs> and yes, they go home. Rattled Depresso Espresso because he couldn't sell the toys, and yeah, everybody's happy in the end. So, another S tier. It's pretty goddamn fire, if I'm honest with you. Monsters, Inc. was a very interesting movie, in my opinion. I remember watching this in the first time on the TV, and I've always just heard about it, but never actually seen it before in my life. I remember watching this on the TV for the first time and being like, God damn, this is fire for 2001. The story goes... Monster Closets. <laughs> Closet Monsters. And their job is to go on ahead and scare absolutely every child for their own personal benefits. Like electricity, apparently, or some shit like that. And this is Sullivan, our main scarer, who is actually the top of this leaderboard comparing against this lizard-looking guy named Randall, who is actually a goddamn... secret villain. A plot twist villain. Well, Randall was working late one night, and as a result, forgot a door. And while he, Sullivan was trying to inspect the door, he lets out this character named Boo, who is the only human character in the entire movie, and god fucking damn was she annoying. <coughs> the mission was to simply go on ahead and get her back to her door, but throughout the way they encountered several problems along on the way. Like, Mike Wazowski couldn't go on ahead and get some goddamn documents or whatever like that, which in my opinion was pretty goddamn funny. Now, in my opinion, I think this movie gets an easy A tier. Finding Nemo was alright, I guess. Now, Finding Nemo was definitely one of the movies that made quite little sense. It's about this dad with his wife, who had about 200 children, but were immediately threatened by a gigantic shark. So, wife panics, goes on ahead, leads the shark directly to the children, and everybody dies but one. Wow, this actually is, um, I never realized it until I said it out loud now, it's actually quite a dark movie. But don't worry, the one son grows up and has a fucked fin because of the shark attack scar, so, it's okay. Anyways, pussy dad doesn't want to let him go to school because of, uh, life PTSD, I guess. And, but, Nemo insists, eventually he lures in. And while he was talking to the teacher, a few of them sneak off, Nemo tries to show his dad he's no longer a goddamn pussy by flying out in the middle of the goddamn ocean, and gets kidnapped while Nemo's father gets blindfolded with a goddamn flashbang. Dang. And then the entire story is about Nemo meeting this dumbass Dory who has as much memory loss as I have brain cells, and everything like that. And then they together just try to go on ahead and fucking find him. Eventually they find him, good shit in the end. Honestly, this movie gets a B tier. It's alright. 
Incredibles is a movie about a family who has superpowers, featuring a guy who has more muscle than I've ever seen in a goddamn man. Alas, a girl who is stretchier than my goddamn gum in my pocket that's been there for three years. Older sister named Violet, who has the ability to summon a force field and become completely fucking invisible, and a little boy named Dash, who can literally run at the speed of goddamn light. So yes, the plot twist villain was some guy who actually was a big fanboy of Mr. Incredible and was really trying to fucking, you know, be on his side, but Mr. Incredible just kept rejecting him over and over again, so... That was funny. Man, he turned out to be a villain because of that. I'm honest to god, I don't remember a lot of things from this movie, so I'm gonna have to give it B tier. Just live with it, alright. The soundtrack slaps, but it's just my personal memory. It works like Dory's on this one. Cars is one of my favorite movies, probably because I've been watching it since the day I was goddamn born. It's been made a year before me, so of course I'm gonna be growing up with this one. The movie is about a car named Lightning McQueen who wants to go on ahead and win a Piston Cup, which is basically like marathon for people, I guess, because they're cars, but sure thing. But one mistake leads to another, and but because of this absolute jackass's idea of going on ahead and not paying for extra tires and just taking the gas bill. <coughs> He goes on the head and blows both of his tires right before the finish line. What an absolute fucking moron. So, it's a three-way tie. So they have to go to California for another race. And then we get some classic montage. Life is a highway, and now I wanna drive it. While both of them were sleeping on the road, Lightning McQueen tumbles out the goddamn road and finds himself stuck in Radiator Springs Road 66, a completely fucking abandoned town. Anyways, mistakes lead to mistakes, and Lightning McQueen gets stuck there for a long time. Anyways, this movie is a really big childhood of mine, so I have to give it A tier. I was gonna give it S tier, but my mom ended up calling these two guys pedophiles. Ratatouille is a pretty simple film, but something that you can actually enjoy. It's about a rat that likes cooking, the complete fucking opposite thing that you could possibly ask from a rat. Basically, story goes, they live in Babushka's apartment, but unfortunately one mistake leads to another and they get fucking exposed, so Babushka gets her goddamn shotgun out and literally commits to suicide with this goddamn thing. And now they have to abandon Babushka's house, and they end up separating on some goddamn tunnels. So now Remy is at Paris and finds himself in Augusto's restaurant, which was a five star restaurant before one food critic gave him a bad rating, which ended up losing him a star, and as a result, he ended up killing himself. So Remy finds himself in this godforsaken kitchen, and at this time they also hire another random ass dumbass who literally just fucking graduated preschool. So this guy fucks up with a soup, Remy helps him fix it, as a result gets kidnapped in a goddamn jar, almost killed, and he saves him. So now they're friends. And some fucking how throughout their friendship they realize that... Remy can control this random guy by his hair, which shouldn't be possible unless if the hair is directly connected to his brain. This movie gets A tier. Nice. Now if Wally sounds like a bad film, that's because it is. No, I'm kidding, I love this film so much. The film is about humans who abandoned Earth because they made it a complete shit show that you couldn't live on anymore. So they sent out a lot of Wallys to clean their shit, but one of them, our main man Wally, is different, and he enjoys a lot of stuff. So, yeah. But at one point they send down a robot named Eve, who was supposed to be looking for something, but Wally, you know, he sees love at first sight, it's wonderful. Eventually he shows Eve his random shit and shows a plant, which is exactly what Eve needed because after that she just goes completely fucking AFK and really concerns Wally. And Eve gets picked up by a spaceship, taking Wally with them, and then we get to see that every human has become your average Discord moderator, including the captain who is supposed to be steering this ship, but he is controlled by this autopilot guy. Also, because they've been in space for so long, their bones have completely fucking deformed and so on. Anyways, later on, Wally gets killed by this fucking machine and the captain he's pissed at this point so what he does he's done this is amazing after they land on earth successfully eve does hyper surgery on wally but he has completely forgotten everything so they do a, some kind of i don't know like fucking buzz thing like i assume it's a kiss and it jogs his memory back and yeah end of movie honest to god this movie is a fucking masterpiece s tier easy peasy Alright, so up is a movie about a kid who wants to be just like his lord and savior, Charles, 
whose fucking surname I forgot. Anyways, he meets a girl who shares the same passion as him for this Charles guy, and they both get married later on in life, make minimum wage, but then they find out they cannot have children because either, I don't know, either her oven is broken or his piss pump supplies a lack of baby mix or some shit like that, I don't know. So they want to go to Paradise Falls as their childhood dream, but unfortunately Ellie dies. Wow, what a depressing start to a movie. Anyways, at some point, the Carl Fredrickson gets evicted from his house, but instead of going to a foster home like he was told to, he fucking summons like a million balloons and, you know, just flies away into the goddamn stratosphere. And for this to fucking work, you would need to, literally, the house needs to weigh less than one god fucking damn Nikocado avocado, <laughs> alright? Oh, and also, there was this kid named Russell, a dog named Dog, and a rare bird named Kevin. That's basically what happens throughout the entire movie, and then Carl Fredrickson adopts Russell as his grandson or something like that, I don't exactly know, but sure thing, it seems pretty goddamn memorable. Also, if this is his mom, then how the fuck is she completely alright with this? You know what? I'm not gonna ask. Anyways, Up was a pretty fantastic movie. S tier. Alright, moving on, we have Toy Story 3, which should have been the end to the Toy Story franchise, but yeah, they just had to make another fu- So Toy Story 3 is revolved around Andy growing up and needing to go to college, so the toys don't get played with as often anymore because Andy's all grown up now. But instead of finding a brand new owner, they just wanna make it work with him somehow. I don't know. So eventually they get dropped off at Sunnyside, who is ruled by this evil yet interesting bear Lotso. It smells like fucking strawberries for some reason, but sure, I'm not gonna question it. Lotso's backstory is very depressing, honestly, and I do recommend if you haven't seen it already, then you should definitely go on ahead and see his backstory. It's it's pretty upsetting. Anyways, Andy moves out for college and he donates all his toys to Bonnie. So yeah, honestly, I'm gonna have to give this movie S tier. It was great. The emotion would have been great. And I wish it was the final movie, but they had to make another one, of course. So yeah. Cars 2 is... Yeah, it's definitely less than mediocre, that's for sure. Last time I saw this movie was when I was like, what, six, seven years old? But going on ahead and rewatching it as a teenager, I definitely understand everything why everyone hates this movie. It is completely useless in the car franchise. You don't need to watch Cars 2 to understand Cars 1 and 3. Just, it's useless. Plus, they tried making a spy movie out of fucking Cars. I don't know what the hell was going at Pixar's headquarters, but I'm not gonna question any more of their mental sanity. Anyways, Cars 2 is like a world racing movie where, you know, cars travel the world and race all around the world in different tracks and so on like that, you know what I mean? And also, Spy Cars somehow confused Mater for an agent? Now, if we were ranking this movie by the time when I was 7, I would have given this movie S tier, because it's a fucking Cars movie! But looking back, I have to give this movie D tier. It is not that great. I Brave is definitely one of the most mediocre Pixar movies I've seen. Or should I say, mediocre princess movies I've ever seen. And trust me, I've seen all the princess movies. I've had a little sister growing up. I know everyone! So Brave is this girl who just wants to go out in the fucking wild and shoot bows. Like, ever heard of a gun, for goodness sake? Just get a goddamn gun! So, you know, princess is order, she must marry prince, and she doesn't want to marry prince. She wants to be a wild girl. So, argument with mom eventually leads to her finding this old bitch. I mean old witch and going on ahead and cursing her mom by turning her into a fucking bear. Like, what? So the entire movie was basically her mom turning more into an actual fucking grizzly bear and losing herself. And by the time the 24 hours were up, she would have been a 100% grizzly bear. So yeah, the whole movie was pretty much them trying to get her back to herself. But then sunrise comes, they do some fucking ritual or something like that and then she's back to her normal self. I honestly have to be honest, after I sat through this movie again, I have to say, it was a little less than mediocre, alright? It was a little less than mediocre. I have to go with C tier, it's, it's alright, I guess. Monsters University is a pretty goddamn great prequel to Monsters Inc. It shows how Sully and Mike became best friends and how Mike was trying to prove to everybody that he's scary, but in reality, he wasn't that scary. So him and Sully cheat to get Mike's grades through the roof, just like I did with my parents. Ha 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 ha. The villain was mediocre, I guess, but nonetheless, it was a pretty interesting movie. I can't really say that much because honest to God, while doing this voiceover, I can't remember that much, but go watch the movie yourself and you'll understand. But from what I did, understand it's an easy beat here inside out is a movie that controls a human's emotions by 
brain cells. There are five different brain cells. Joy, sadness, anger, disgust, and fear. And each one of them serve their own purposes and so on. But in the beginning, sadness fucks up some memories and so on. And yes, and looking back, sadness was kind of a dick throughout this entire beginning and only really served a purpose near the end and so on. Yeah. Eventually, some core memories get lost or something like that. So Joy and Sadness have to go and retrieve them because they totally did not get lost as well. And throughout their garments, since anger, fear, and disgust are not Joy or Sadness, they have to pretend to be like them which is pretty funny to see the attempts also somehow they came to the conclusion that she has to fucking run away from home or something like that and it was pretty goddamn cool to see how emotions work honestly it's a b tier it's pretty all right the good dinosaur was actually not that good this was pixar's first flop in my opinion and according to the internet as well and the good dinosaur is basically a movie about if the asteroid were to hit earth but it completely missed so the dinosaurs never went extinct and this is our main man arlo who has a really goofed up voice and caveman child honest to god i had more fun looking at the timeline passing by than watching the actual movie itself but the one thing i cannot complain about is the background holy shit the backgrounds are incredible Nice. Anyways, the movie ends with Arlo giving Caveman Child up for adoption or something like that, and yeah, this movie gets an F tier because it's not an interesting thing. Other than the backgrounds, it's it's boring. I had more fun staring at the backgrounds than the actual movie itself. Finding Dory was pretty goddamn cool, if I'm honest with you. Now, in my opinion, Finding Dory was slightly better than Finding Nemo. It's yeah. Also, there's fish on land scenes, such as really cool i honest to god while reviewing this i don't really remember much about this movie i watched it one time at 3 a.m before going to sleep i know i should have watched it again i should have rewatched it but i don't want to spend another hour and a half anyways this movie was slightly better than finding nemo because i found the actual story to be just a tad bit more entertaining than finding nemo so yeah this is gonna be getting an eight here Oh yes, Cars 3. This is the last time I've ever been to a movie theater in 2017 to watch this goddamn thing live. Movie is about Lightning McQueen getting overtaken by this new race car named Jackson Storm because Lightning McQueen is getting old and crusty now. So he tries to practice and eventually is put up for retirement or something like that. He tries to get better but eventually fucks up and so on. Also he meets this yellow car who wants to be a racer and so on so. Anyways this yellow car is supposed supposed to be his trainee or something like that and yeah funny wacky adventures some shit like that i don't know cool good stuff so yeah it's a cars movie so anyway his final race comes lightning mcqueen races first half but then gives this yellow car a chance to race for the second half because you know she deserves a second fucking chance so eventually he becomes her tutor just like dog hudson became his tutor and this only only this final scene made me feel a little bit of emotion because the whole movie, I was just sitting through like, yep, this is all is happening. Honest to God, this movie gets a goddamn B tier. It's all right, I guess. I just, now, Coco, God fucking damn, awarded best Pixar ending ever. And I don't cry during movies, but even I, with a soul as dark as a void laid a single tear near the ending basically the movie is about this mexican kid named miguel whose family absolutely despises music except for him because i guess he likes music i don't know what's up with this family though anyways his family destroys his guitar so he tries to rob ernesto de la cruz's guitar which ends up sending him to the line of the fucking dead through a portal and now he can see dead people and the whole time he's just trying to get back home or something like that from ernesto de la cruz because he thinks he's his great great grandfather but turns out this random guy was his great great grandfather what are the fucking odds that the guy he pulls aside is his great great grandfather probably not a lot but i'm not gonna judge anyways the movie is very nice i enjoyed watching it thoroughly and yeah and yeah it's just a very easy s tier all right as you probably know incredibles one i had difficulty remembering so incredibles two ha 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 i fucking forgot almost everything except for a few things basically people hate superheroes and this corporation is trying to make the people believe that superheroes are good again featuring a brother and sister but plot twist villain uh oh the sister was behind it all because she hates the superheroes but then why help your brother with the superheroes huh why do that all right that's all I remember from the movie. Honest to fucking god, I watched it at 5am because I couldn't sleep. So yeah, 
from what I saw, B tier. Toy Story 4 should not really be there. Now, don't get me wrong. I wouldn't say that it's a horrible film. It's just the worst out of all four movies. All right? That's what I'll say. So Toy Story 4 is about Bonnie's continuation of how she uses toys. And remember in Toy Story 3 how Andy said he'll give Woody on one condition and she takes amazing care of him? Yeah, fuck that. Let's create an entire fucking Spork who tries to commit suicide for the first 15 minutes of the goddamn movie. So anyway, Spork commits suicide and Woody jumps after to go on ahead and bring him back or something like that. Like, why not let the Spork die, huh? Why not let the Spork- Oh, and also remember Bo Peep who was in the second movie and just magically disappeared in the third one? Yeah, fuck that. Let's just bring her back as a homeless woman. Anyways, the entire movie is basically about Woody trying to get sport back to Bonnie. Oh, and also there was this girl who was a villain who literally tried to kill Woody's voice box for her own personal goods or something like that. I don't know. I guess some people are supposed to take pity on her, but I really just found her completely useless in the morning. And what surprised me was the ending. Woody was given a choice between going back to Bonnie or staying with Bo Peep in a homeless world as lost toys. Now, there's no fucking way Woody's gonna be abandoning his child, right? He's been loyal since Andy no, he's gonna abandon his child and be homeless with Bo Peep. C tier. So Soul is a pretty mature movie. Soul is about a guy who dies very young and yeah, he's dead. What a depressing start. Anyways, he sees the light but goes in darkness. The problem with being faster than light is that you can only live in darkness. Yeah, the guy means another soul thing, and somehow, I exactly forgot how, but somehow, their back mistake happened, because the soul is in his body, and he is in a random ass cat's body, or something like that. And the entire movie is basically him playing second person with himself, and trying to control himself, although... He really has no control over himself. Yeah, it was funny. Anyways, sad moments happen. He's back to his own body. Some fucking how goes back, which I actually forgot how he went back, but he somehow goes back. And don't worry, everybody makes up in the end. They go to Earth or something. Honestly, one of the most mature Pixar movies. This is A tier. Great. Now, Luca is a pretty interesting film, in my opinion, because of the fact that it's very simple to understand. Basically, they're these sea monsters. When they step in water, they turn into the sea monster, and when they step on land and dry out, they become a human. Pretty simple concept for my stupid brain. Basically, Luca abandons his parents because uh, they don't allow him to do human stuff or something like that, and meets this kid named Alberto, who is actually another guy exactly like Luca, you know, the monster thing. Or something and i meet this guy who is not exactly a plot twist villain because of the fact that he's it's shown quite early on that he hates sea monsters but they also see a competition where they can win a really shitty vespa and go to the goddamn universe with it so they go on ahead and train every day with woman they found on the street honestly it gets a tier it's pretty good turning red Nominated as funniest Pixar movie ever. So basically Turning Red is about this girl named May and her Asian parents. Don't cancel me. It's, 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 no, it's, no, it's, no, no. And it turns out May's ancestors had some obsession with red pandas. So God's granted their wish and they're now, they can turn to red pandas or something like that. She's in love with this random guy whose name I don't even fucking know. So we're just going to call him Devin and he works at a goddamn 7-Eleven. 7-Eleven Devin. Oh, nice. That rhymes. Wait, someone already made it? Oh god fucking Devin! Well, whatever, I'm still using 7-Eleven Devin. So she falls in love with 7-Eleven Devin and draws rule 34 hentai of him, and gets exposed by her mom right in front of the goddamn store clerk. So, yeah. May receives a massive nightmare and wakes up as a gigantic red panda, and her mom thinks, Oh god, my daughter's on period! Although I can assume that since it only affects every woman of the family, it could be like a menstruation. I don't know, I'm not a girl and never will be. So eventually they find a way to, like, profit off of the panda because May wants to go to this concert for Four Town, a random Vietnamese band that sings or something like that. And they profit off the panda make a lot of money or something like that. And May sneaks off to the god fucking damn concert anyways. But it didn't matter that much anyway because of the fact that her mom got so pissed at her that she went on ahead and released her red panda. And unfortunately for the entire god fucking damn town, her panda is the size of fucking Godzilla. But no worries because the family had to do the same ritual on the mom and she would probably lose her red panda too. So they just had to keep her distracted in a circle and- OH GOD! Ah! 
So anyways, eventually May keeps the red panda because it helps her embrace herself and she's happy with who she is. Honestly, the funniest Pixar movie ever, A tier, easy peasy. Lightyear kinda sucked ass, honestly. I don't think it's a good movie. Now here's the thing, Lightyear's only advantage is the graphics. If the graphics were ass, then I'm pretty goddamn sure that the entire movie would be complete fucking ass. Now Buzz is so egotistical that it just makes him even more annoying than the Toy Story version of him, you know what I mean? Honestly, after sitting through the entire god fucking damn movie, I cannot help but wonder where did I go wrong in life. The graphics were incredible and everything, but the movie is pretty goddamn boring, so... D tier. And so there we go. I went on ahead, watched and ranked every single Pixar movie. Yes. Please end my life. So, I don't think I missed any movies, but if I did, make sure to leave a comment down below and I'll re-watch it and pin my review of that movie down. I have no idea if I watched any or no. So anyways, here's the final tier list for anybody curious. And thank you everybody so much for watching this video, and I'll see you guys in the next video. PEACE!